welcome to the Leadership Lounge. We're in a really unusual lounge today. We're in the, where are we, Heidi? This is, what was it called? The Gallowsfield U Wood at the U Room. The U Room in Gallowsfield Wood. And we're here today to meet Heidi Franklin. Uh, so uh, welcome to our guests and welcome to Heidi. Heidi is the founder and director of Wild Play. Um, and over the last four years, I have been watching and intrigued to watch the story of Heidi and Wild Play. Uh, and Heidi is a former head teacher and she knows the value of outdoor um, outdoors to stimulate and well-being and to create adventure uh, and problem solving for children. And this was set up in February 2018 uh, and she established it with her friend Denise. Uh, and it's all about putting the joy of learning and discovery through the great outdoors um, back into the lives of children and adults. And she's taken a, a dream and turned it into a reality. So this month, we're going to explore that topic uh, of turning vision into reality as our, a leadership lounge topic this week. And uh, we're here in the woods because this is Wild Play. This is where Wild Play is based. This is my it? office. This is your office. <laughs> and you'll notice if you're watching on video, we are wrapped up warm. We have a, a Heidi cup of tea uh, made in her Wild Play mugs. Uh, and we're here just to explore with you today that vision into reality. Um, Certainly from my, my reading, Heidi, Seth Godin, who I is one of my favourite authors, says that leadership is painting a picture of the future, going there and people will follow. Uh, and to paint that picture, we have to have a really clear vision uh, of what we want it to look like in our mind's eye. And I've, I've kind of watched your story from a distance on social media. And to me, there was a really clear vision and you seem to be working it out. And so I thought, what better person to come and chat to? And and for me, turning that vision into reality is about seeing it clearly, believing it passionately, and then pursuing it mm. aggressively. Um, and so I want to just explore that with you today so that our listeners can learn from your story, from your experience as part of that process. So it's a delight to meet you at last in <laughs> I know. person. Uh, I know. We've had crazy. the interactions on social media and here we are in the woods uh, in January uh, to kind of discover a bit more about Wild Play. So tell us a bit more about Wild Play and where did the idea kind of come from? Where did this all start? I know, absolutely. So Denise and I uh, met at antenatal classes uh, when we were both expecting our eldest children who are now almost 15 and uh, all those years ago you know you go along to the, these classes you don't know anybody and we instantly kind of knew that we were teachers because we were talking in six six weekly blocks you, you live a life <laughs> in a six weekly half term block don't you and um, strangely enough I didn't make the final session of the classes because uh, my daughter arrived two and a half weeks early but uh, the midwife came around to my house with a little piece of paper and she said, one of the ladies on the course gave me her number to give to you. Yeah. And of course it was Denise. Yeah. And so we've been friends ever since. Uh, Denise uh, has also been a teacher. And uh, really that's kind of how the story started. Yeah. Uh, we'd worked together a little bit. We'd, we, you know, both sort of singing from the same hymn sheet in terms of what children really needed yeah. uh, with both being in schools for over 20 years and knew very much that four walls of a classroom doesn't suit every child yeah. so when we started uh, the business we thought we were just going to be working with children holiday clubs things like that um, just and working with schools to support you know the the emotional sort of well-being really that, that children needed yeah. with outdoor learning and forest school um, about two weeks into the business, we were invited to run a workshop for adults that were all unemployed and indoors. Yeah. Uh, so totally not what we thought we were going to be doing. And we looked at each other across the room that day and the penny just dropped. And we just knew that what we wanted to do, actually underlying everything, was about what's right for people of all ages. Yeah. So we quickly went back, changed our codes with Companies House and uh and we are a health wellness and education business for people of all ages to promote the benefits of spending time outdoors yeah that's what we do brilliant so your it's interesting your vision started around children but, yeah. but actually your vision grew because you realized actually i suppose it's the child within all of us needs nurturing absolutely and, and it is and i think that you know we both knew that 
when our children were very small, we used to get together every half term, we used to take them, and we were always outside. We always yeah. did something outdoors. And there was nothing really locally um, that kind of fitted that bill, particularly with things like holiday clubs yeah. for children. Yeah. So in a way, that's that's where it all started. But it was it was that session that we did with adults when we said, hang on a minute, this is, this is so much deeper than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and we haven't really looked back, to be honest. Yeah. So is that vision then for health and well-being Using the outdoors and, mm. and appreciating being outside can, can bring part of that well-being and replenishment. Definitely. And so it started for you and Denise, that connection as people. Mm. But what what what's the story? In one sense, there's there's a gap in the story. You, you kind of we know where you, where you met and, and here it, here's this, the kind of company being launched and then its vision being expanded. But what what's part of the story that caused you? Because you, you said you were in education. Yeah. You were a head teacher. Yeah. And, and now you've done wild play. So what what kind of brought you to decide, actually, at this junction in my life, uh, I'm going to now set this up? Was, was there Absolutely. anything in you, your story, your experiences that brought Absolutely. that about? Absolutely. I think there was for both of us, really. And um, certainly from my perspective, you know, I'd been in, in headship for 13 years. It's not an easy job. Yeah. It changed dramatically <laughs> yeah. during that time. Yeah. And, um, you know, there'd been, certainly in the last school that I worked with in the last couple of years, there'd been an awful lot of um, bereavement um, in terms of staff. My previous chair of governors had passed away, which had a massive impact mm. on our school. Mm. And one thing and another. And, you know, things changed overnight and out of the blue, really. Um, you know, with, with certain situations that I certainly didn't see coming. Yeah. Um, and it would be very easy to harp on about you know well this happened and that happened and he said and she said and actually for me it's not really about that it was a life-changing moment that took me by surprise yeah. where the control was completely out of my hands yeah um and put me into a very difficult uh psychological situation actually for a year yeah whereby um because the rug was completely pulled from underneath me yeah um and there was a lot of speculation, um, and I think a lot of people will probably understand this, a, a speculation about, well, well, where's she gone? Why has she gone? What's happening? Has she done this? Has she done that? Has she got this? Has she got that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that that's tricky. But the biggest thing for me was that I, because of the trauma that I had experienced yeah. in my situation, I suffered with the most excruciating anxiety mm. to the point where I literally didn't leave home for a year unless I was walking the dog yeah um because I just wasn't expecting to be in the situation that I was in mm. so that was really hard and it's it's something in terms of the emotional impact the physical impact um of of illnesses and things that happened as a result of that yeah. that are triggered through trauma yeah um and financial impact um, and all of those things not only impact you as an individual, but they impact on your family. Yeah. So that is really, really difficult. And it's it's a significant chapter, I suppose you would call it in my life. Um, but for me, it's not about, oh, this has happened and, you know, gosh, wasn't it awful? And, it, you know, I'm the victim. Yes, it was awful. Yeah. Um, and it took me to the very depths of the bottom, the bottom of the pit that I'd yeah. ever been to. Yeah. However... After that year and as that year went on, I had to I had to mend myself and yeah. I had to develop strategies to help myself in order to rebuild myself and overcome that situation. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, you know, we could talk about at great length, you know, on another occasion, because that is a that is a massive thing to be yeah. able to do. So in terms of my story and where we are now, yeah. it's very much about, okay, sometimes you are in a very adverse situation in your life that you are never expecting. Yeah. This happens to lots of people for lots of different reasons. Yeah, yeah, and I can relate to that. <laughs> and you have choices to make. And I'm very much a believer in you have to help yourself. Mm. And that's what I had to do. Mm. And I have to say, Denise was somebody who pretty much saved me, actually. Yeah. She was a friend who absolutely was there. Um, situations in, in her life had changed a little bit and she was ready to start and move away from the classroom. Um, she'd been in that classroom role for, for, for 20 years as well. And we literally sat around the kitchen table one day drinking tea and said, you know, let's do this. Yeah. Let's, let's give this a go. Yeah. So 
that's kind of how it all started really yeah. um and i think because of the hours that i spent walking my dog yeah i had felt deep within my soul the benefit that that brought to me in terms of my own well-being yeah and even though we started off wanting to work with children and expecting to because that was our bread and butter that's yeah. all we'd known yeah. for 20 years mm. actually it you know as part of that glance across the room when we worked with those adults we also knew that being outdoors was good for us as well and if it was good for us surely it had to be good for everybody else yeah uh, uh, firstly let me just thank you for sharing what's a really personal and intimate story with both me and and the listeners mm. because i think something that we see is really important in everyday leader is to be authentic mm. and to be real with people and yeah. and if we think that leadership is all about the highs and the joys uh when we hit those mm. things that are going to happen to us that are difficult it then mm. becomes a real surprise Absolutely. so actually for us as leaders to be saying we do have those difficult moments but i think what's lovely about your story is yet yeah, as you said the walking of the dog in mm. in the woods and in the outdoors was the one thing that you you could and you got that replenishment Absolutely. from and so from that challenging situation it helped you form that vision and alongside a good friend that yeah. walked alongside you absolutely with similar ideas and then that ability to say well we want this you started as you say from what you knew of children mm. Mm. but then we're open enough with that vision to realize no actually from your experience that you'd had and from meeting people that equally needed help yeah. it helps you shape this vision that it can be for children and for adults so absolutely your story is fantastic uh and and i think what our listeners can learn from this is that we we gain that vision through mm. our experiences um, for sure. and and uh, i've been looking at some interesting stuff recently that if we view our experiences as good or bad we can mm. miss out on stuff mm. but actually they are just experiences of learning and from from the challenging moments you yeah. had you brought from that learning to shape that vision of yours i think so and i think it's about you know we're on a journey we're all on a journey yeah and you never know quite ro what route that journey is going to take yeah and you know a smooth you know a, a good sailor never sailed a smooth sea or whatever the phrase yeah, is yeah, you know yeah. and and actually when you hit those big waves at the time you don't always know how to deal with it and it knocks you off your perch yeah. something chronic however it is trusting that journey yeah and i had to repeatedly say that to myself trust the journey trust the journey and you find your way out and you know difficult paths often do lead to, to some really good destinations yeah. and, and but it has to come within you it, yeah you know that's, yeah. that's part of it i think yeah so i mean the, the first thing about that vision then is seeing it clearly and seeing the vision and yeah. so for you what helped you see the vision was both your experience personally mm. both as a, a as a head teacher and as a former head teacher uh, you're working with children but also that personal experience of you and seeing the benefit of working outdoors or mm. being outdoors yeah. for you helped with your well-being and thinking oh, sure. if this worked for me then I can bring this to others so that's what helped shape that vision um so one of my, it's interesting you mentioned Denise a key part in helping you shape shape that she i assume denise is somewhere in the warm rather than sitting here yeah, in the woodland. she is lucky yeah. old thing <laughs> <laughs> so i i think it, what, what's really interesting for me is just uh how you make sure that vision is shared so you talked about that look across the kitchen mm. table uh, so you formed that initially together but how have you made sure that that vision was shared between the two as you as you work yeah together? i think i think we're really fortunate in that our skill set complements each other denise has come from you know the, the classroom um very much you know that face to face with the children my skills obviously were from a leadership perspective mm -hmm. latterly so in terms of setting up a business it's actually worked really well yeah we are very different people yeah um but we do complement each other and i think in terms of that vision it's about it's about our knowledge base yeah. and you know we've got 20 years behind us each of working in school we know about child development we know about, about emotional well-being we know yeah. about resilience we know about all that stuff and you think about all the hundreds of children that we've worked with yeah. during our school careers yeah. and what we could bring in term to that in terms of our business and i think you know we very much in terms of that working relationship and as we've gone on with that vision we check each other all the time. Yeah. You know, if we've got an idea, we talk it through to the nth degree yeah. and almost work backwards yeah. in terms of worst case worst case scenario, right? Let's work backwards from that. And then you come to the outcome that it that it can work. Yeah. Um and I think I think we do share that we're very passionate with that vision in terms of 
everything we do is about the impact on the people that we work with. And we both feel really strongly about that. Yeah. And, you know, we have to even it out between the times when we work on the business and when we work in the business. Yeah. And I don't think we'll ever not work in the business yeah. because that's the fun bit. That's the bit yeah. we really, really yeah. love. But that keeps you grounded yeah. as and, well. And I guess it helps you check both as individuals, but also as a pair. Definitely. Are we still operating this vision? Yep. And I like, I love the way you said, actually, we, if we're coming across something, we, we check with each yeah, other we and we ask, and where does this lead to? Yeah. So again, you can see, does this fit the vision? Yeah. Um, so but you're kind of seeing it and you're checking it amongst each other and anything new that you're working on together, you're then cross-referencing. Does Absolutely. this fit back All with the our time. vision? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So again, for our listeners, it's about what can I take from Heidi yeah. and Denise's experience? It's that regular check-in with each other and yeah. it's asking yourself, is what we're about to do, does it fit our vision? I think so. And I think as well, we're also very good at, at checking in with our own well-being yeah. um you know with each other literally on a daily basis and that's the beauty of a partnership that we have that we are very lucky that, that we've got each other and yeah. we do scoop each other up when we need to or you know if one of us has you know got a bad back or whatever the other one carries the load that day yeah. or whatever it might be yeah and and i think that's that's just good practice um and again i think that's part of us as individuals but also of our background as yeah. well yeah brilliant so Clearly you guys uh, know each other, you've worked together, you kind of understand the yeah. ethos that you sit from. So seeing that vision, you are able to work that through together for what you wanted. You've also, you regularly touch base and check on it and anything new, mm -hmm. does this still fit our vision so that you check you've got that consistency. So again, for our listeners, it's these key principles of Definitely. just checking and asking, does this still fit the vision? Yeah. And making sure as a, as a team that you, you know you sing from that same hymn sheet we do. as part of that process so the next part of it is to believe it passionately and i think you know we, we both work in business and mm. and we've been doing it over the last couple of years which has gone through pandemic and both schools businesses mm -hmm. charities mm -hmm. have, have come across all kinds of challenges over mm. 2020 and 2021 yeah. and here we are at the start of 2022 how how has lockdown and and the pandemic affected you as a business and were there moments then that caused you to question or did it make you stronger uh, through that it's i mean it's a really interesting question yeah. i think i think for us it's been a very very challenging time we work outdoors we don't pay business rates on premises yeah so by default we weren't eligible for any government support yeah and within the first couple of weeks of the first lockdown, we obviously lost significant income mm, and revenue mm. and money that we'd already taken. Yeah. And it was absolutely the right thing at the time to do refunds and yeah. all that kind of stuff. That's because nobody knew where we were going to be. Yeah. But we weren't eligible for anything. And that was really hard. And every time, you know, Rishi came on the telly with the next the next update of how the government were going to support us, we kind of went, "Oh God, not yeah. again! Oh God, yeah. um, not us! Not, again. Uh, not us again!" Yeah. Uh, so that was that was really difficult. Mm. And um, there was one day uh, actually, which was the first day I kind of sat on the stairs and and had a tear roll down my face because yeah. it was that realize realization we weren't getting anything. Yeah. And that was really hard. Um, but you know, resilience is key yeah. to business and obviously in life in general. Yeah. And you dig deep and we did what we believed was the right thing to do. And after the first couple of weeks of the first lockdown, we just said, right, we need to help. We need to help our community. We knew that there were all these families who suddenly were homeschooling mm. with the best will in the world. Nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah. They had school in the morning and the children had nothing to do in the afternoon. Yeah. Parents were tearing their hair out, yeah, trying to fathom yeah. it all out. So we literally raided our resources and distributed craft goodie bags. I remember seeing um, those. You had like the craft we, boxes, we didn't had, you? We did. Yeah. We did all that kind of thing. And yeah. we just delivered them, left them on people's doorsteps yeah. because we just wanted to help. Yeah. And from then we developed our challenge our challenges which we shipped all over the UK yeah. and it was about keeping children you know busy engaged motivated things to do keep them occupied get them physically moving yeah. all that stuff they could do at home in the garden or on a walk or whatever so we did a lot mm. of that kind of thing mm. um, and then it gradually it came around to sort of the end of July and we were given the go-ahead to to be able to function in the summer yeah that was a really interesting time because we had no idea 
what that was going to be like. Yeah. Um, and we were inundated. We were absolutely inundated that summer. Um, and it was all obviously children who hadn't left their parents since March. Yeah. It was the first time for all of them that they'd been anywhere different. Yeah. Um, we were hand washing like, you know, no tomorrow yeah. out in the woods. <laughs> um, and it was, a, it was an anxious time for the children, but also for the parents as well, because mm. they were having to let their children go. Mm. Um, and suddenly, Everything that we'd done at Wild Play seemed to take on a slightly different turn because we literally put our teacher hats properly back on yeah. and said, this is about nurture. This is absolutely about well-being. Yeah. This is about anxiety. It's all that stuff, which, of course, we'd been doing, but yeah. not to that degree. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we supported a lot of children that summer um, and the impact was massive. But the, the really positive thing, I think, that came out of that was that people suddenly got a much deeper understanding, deeper, real deep understanding of what Wild Play was all about. Yeah. And we weren't just a holiday club yeah. or somebody to do a children's birthday party. This is about knowledge and it's about expertise. Yeah. And it's about really honing in on what those children and young people needed yeah. at that time. Yeah. So it wasn't all bad. Yeah. Um, and then this time last year, of course, we were running sessions on Zoom. Yeah. Who'd have thought it? Yeah. <laughs> and what I love about your story there is that you hit adversity, but you still believed it passionately. And as you say, there were the moments where the tear trickles down the face yeah. because you do, you have those old bum moments. Yeah. Um, but you still held on to that vision. And, and you know, there was t talk at the time, wasn't there, about pivoting. It, very difficult to pivot when you're on lockdown. But what you we did, did do, <laughs> we you, had you to. pivoted. You said, actually, what do, I, what do people need? And you yeah. created these boxes, activity boxes for people yeah. to do. Um, and, and so I love the fact that that vision still remained the same, just the vehicle you were delivering it in had to different. adapt during that Absolutely. period. And so you kept coming back. So what keeps you passionately believing? Because uh, in one sense, if people have a vision and they, they, they go and roll it out, you know, occasionally maybe it all just goes smoothly and brilliantly. But in most cases, to bring that vision to reality, it hits lots of hurdles. Mm. So what is it that you and Denise have tapped into to to keep you going through the challenges and the adversity. I face. think it's it's really about believing in your purpose. Yeah. You have to know what your purpose is. And if you're really focused on that, yeah. and you've got enough behind you to know that it, it works, mm. um, you have to hang on to that. And for us, it's about doing the right thing for the people that we work with. Yeah. Um, our, our motto, if you like, is, is very much that, you know, people leave us feeling better than when they arrived. Yeah. Um, and that's a combination of being here, mm. but also with the knowledge and the expertise that we bring yeah. um, to the to the sessions that we run, no matter how old the person is or yeah. how young they are. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that's a real that's a really key thing. We've never once looked back and said, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, because because we we talk about stuff all the time yeah. and we check ourselves and we make sure and we're thorough and we our attention to detail is very strong. Yeah. Um, so I think all of those things really kind of contribute to that. Yeah. So it's it's bringing it, keep bringing it back to that core purpose. Definitely. Yeah. And and when you know that core purpose, whatever hurdles you feel, you get back up again, yeah. don't you? It's, you almost become the weevil that wobbles but doesn't fall Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Resilience is key. Yeah. And and knowing your purpose drives that resilience yeah, forward. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So for those listening or watching that. That's a key principle to take when you hit the hurdles. Mm -hmm. It's about, it, it's it's almost going back, isn't it? Make sure you know your purpose for this Definitely. right at the beginning. Not what you're doing, but why you're yep. doing it. So that then when you hit those hurdles. It reminds you. It just, yeah, and you just, you, you pick yourself back up again and go for over sure. the top of them. For yeah. sure. And so, uh, you know, key part of the story as you talked about it so far has been working with Denise. Mm. Um, so how does, how does working with others kind of help with that? kind of maintaining that sense of passionate belief in what you're doing yeah that's a really interesting one and obviously when you've been in school and you've recruited lots of people over the years mm. and you know all that kind of stuff it's very different you know and I think we're not we're not a massive team yeah uh, of people but uh for us you know life is about people you meet people for a reason whether it's a good thing yeah. or a bad thing yeah, yeah and you learn from each of those experiences yeah and I think for us finding people who want to share our vision, deliver that vision, believe in that vision in as full a way as they can yeah. to the way that we do yeah. um, 
is really important. We can teach somebody how to light a fire. Yeah. We can teach somebody how to, you know, tie ropes and do all the other fun stuff that we do. Yeah. But you can't teach the way people feel yeah. about certain things. Yeah. That has to come from within. And I think for us, that's a massive part of finding the right people to work with us. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I talk in some of my training around purpose plus alignment equals kind of growth or shift yeah. or movement or improvement. Absolutely. And, and so picking the right people that share that passionate purpose a will mean the, the the thing will grow and continue yeah. and, and will operate smoothly because you've got that synchronicity with everybody. Mm. But I think it also helps fuel it, doesn't it? When, when it's it more does. than just one of you, if there's several of you all believing passionately in this, you you keep feeding each other in that, that I vision I think so. Forward. I think so. And I think ultimately for us is making sure that whoever works with us has the same impact on our participants. Yeah. That's, that's the bottom line for yeah. us. Yeah. How we make other people feel. Yeah is is the goal yeah and if we get that right that's brilliant if yeah. we get it wrong that's not good no um because no. it comes back to your purpose it again, does isn't it? and i think yeah. i think we you know we're very aware that for the first what three years two and a half years it's just been denise and i yeah and people have bought us they've bought yeah. denise and heidi yeah. yeah they've bought the expertise and the knowledge and it's, it's a transition of actually you're buying wild play. You're mm. buying the ethos and the values of what that business brings, whether, you know, I'm delivering a session or somebody else's. Yeah. It, you should get the same experience. Mm. And that's really important to us. Yeah. And so what you're talking about there is creating a culture, aren't Definitely. you? That whatever, wherever someone is interacting with wild play, Absolutely. they get that same, get experience, the same experience of people yeah. that believe passionately in Definitely. that same thing. So again, for our listeners, choosing who you involve in this, is really mm. key your recruitment is really yeah. key isn't it and then your ongoing just as you and denise would regularly touch in with each other yeah. is about making sure your team you're regularly touching with them yeah. and keeping that vision refreshed absolutely yeah yeah so i i noticed and anybody following this up and looking on wild plays website which we highly recommend uh <laughs> Which will be updated soon. Yeah, I highly recommend looking at it. Um, they'll notice that there's a number of uh, successes and accolades that you've received. So there's uh, Theo Pathesis's Small Business Sunday mm -hmm. Award, uh, the Berry Free Press uh, Best New Startup. Was that 2019? Was I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a range of others uh, in there. Queen of Outdoor Learning yeah, was also all included. Kinds of so, things. so yeah, tell us a little bit about those and how that has that been helpful as that kept you fueled in this passion i think belief? so i think i don't think any business should be about chasing awards and yeah. accolades it's mm. not about that i think the key two for us are definitely theo and the brave Free press you know the best new, new startup award yeah because for, for for us that was recognition it was recognition in terms of you know the type of business that we are what our ethos and values are mm. and how we deliver that and execute that to yeah. the best possible potential that we can. Yeah. And, um, you know, anybody who's ever listened to Theo Profitis uh, speak, you know, it's gold dust. It really is. And he's so passionate about small business. Yeah. So to be selected for that award was absolutely fantastic. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a real highlight to be part of that community. And, you know, in, it does make me smile because when, when you go to his annual um, small business event, um, he talks about, you know, the 1% out of all the thousands of people that enter that competition year on year on year, less than 1% get chosen. Mm. And you sit there and from a, an ex-head teacher perspective where you were so driven by data yeah. and percentages, yeah. you kind of sit there and think, I am less than 1% and yeah. this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it flips it on its head a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that and that's that's a great feeling for your business to have. And obviously the Brophy Press Award was great, but it's local. Yeah. Um and to be recognised as a as a really good new startup yeah. in 2019, yeah. be, with all the different things that we were doing, yeah. um, was really quite special, I have yeah. to say. Yeah. And and again it's recognition that your vision was already showing reality really early it? on yeah. bringing it to fruition and and since then obviously there have been the challenges that we talked sure. about earlier where you've continued to bring that vision mm. so uh look forward to hearing about more and more accolades which say it's not about chasing them that's just recognizing the good that you're doing in bringing that vision i think to reality. so and equally i think that actually in, in in terms of that 
But for us, it's the feedback that we get from people. Yeah. That is just as important yeah. as having a sparkly award. Yeah. You know, that, that regular feedback you get from people that say, we've really enjoyed this or this yeah. has helped me because. Yeah. That means so much to us. Yeah. And it's it's the support that we get from our local community who keep coming back to us or recommending us to other people. Yeah that's massive yeah and again it brings it back to that vision isn't it that's why it fuels you because it's fulfilling definitely uh, you're getting feedback you're fulfilling that vision so so our third part about getting you know vision into reality was about you pursuing it aggressively uh you know that sounds quite hard doesn't it being it does aggressive a but it's a, i guess maybe <laughs> we'll replace it with de with determination yeah. Um, so what, in practical terms for our listeners, are the sorts of things that you need to do to get that vision off the ground and, and make sure it's running? Are there some key principles for our listeners about I getting think, it off the ground? I think a key thing is if, you, if you're going to start any business, you've got to be knowledgeable about, about what it is you're going to do. Yeah. Um, if you come with a knowledge base and it's something you're passionate about. Yeah you can make it work. So knowledge, passion. Without, yeah. and hard work, obviously. Yeah. Uh, resilience, obviously. Yeah. Um, all those things, I think, are absolutely key. You have to, you know, you do have to kind of eat, sleep and breathe it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, whilst also maintaining your own well-being. Yeah. Um, yeah but it's, it's part of you. Yeah. And I feel really, I do feel really passionately about that. People have always said to us, oh my God, you guys are so passionate about what you do. We are. Um, and hopefully that comes across yeah. in everything that people see and hear about us whether they experience our our work mm. whether they see it on social media whether they read it in a newspaper report whatever it or on the website whatever it might be yeah that passion needs to come across and and i think you know that's part of our branding yeah. and people often think that branding is about a logo yeah. you know it's about you know a flashy little cup yeah it's not yeah it, it's not about that it's about the experience that people have with us it's all part of that package. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, cult, the culture that they experience has to match what you're professing it's Definitely. All about. Yeah. So so having a knowledge, having a passion yeah. for it. Uh, I, I wonder, I, I know when I set Everyday Leader up, um, a good friend of mine, Andy, he said, unashamedly milk your contacts that when you're setting and, and getting the, the kind of vision off the ground. Is that something that you tapped into at all? Is it about, you know, kind of finding your connections and making contact with you or, or was that not something that entered uh, you um, getting your vision into reality i don't know really not not in the way that that you've just described i yeah. think i mean we started off with you know i attended the mentor startup um, yeah. courses which are yeah. fully funded yeah um and even though obviously coming from a leadership background you know i knew about budgeting i knew yeah. about you know school improvement plans writing a business yeah. plan you know all that kind of stuff um so there was a knowledge already there and I just thought I'm going to go to these because I know I will learn something mm. and they're great. They're mm. a great start for people and I can't recommend that highly enough. Yeah. Um, and mentor have been great with us over, over the years. Um, and I think because we were doing something slightly different, it wasn't a case of just going to a contact. Yeah. I think, I think what's really important and this is something you learn through life and through yeah. experiences that you and I have probably both yeah. encountered. It's not about the volume of people, it's the right ones. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. if you've got a small tribe of people who share your passion, share your purpose, understand what you're about as an yeah. individual and want to support you with that, that is more valuable than 500 people who just want to say hello in the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, I think for us it's, it's about something that's evolved. Yeah. And primarily if you're talking about us you know working with, with children in that respect you know it's about the experience that those parents have and that's why they come back to us you know in terms of working with adults and you know with corporates and things like that which is something that we really want to move into yeah. as we move out of the pandemic yeah. you know that's 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 a really key focus um for us so i think i think it's about having the right people with you yeah absolutely and that, and that's a brilliant comment there leads me into my next question so I mentioned Seth Godin earlier mm. in, in his book Tribes. He talks about creating a tribe, so a, a movement around your mm. idea. And it seems to me that actually wild play has a following. So I just wonder, yeah, you talked about getting the right people who mm. are passionate about what, how did you, uh, have I judged that correctly? Is there a bit of a following for wild well, play? Well, I think there is, yeah. but it's, it wasn't something we really kind of set out to do. Yeah. It wasn't on the list of, oh, we must tick this must, off. Must create a tribe, yeah, No, I know, because how does that work? <laughs> yeah. So I think for us, it's been, 
the first thing that that I needed to do actually when we started the business was get my head around social media. Yeah. Because as a head teacher, it's something you steer clear of. Yeah. And it's actually a bit of a thorn in your side. Yeah, it's normally people um, moaning about exactly. you calling your names. Yeah. Um so I needed to learn that very, very quickly. Yeah. Um and you know, in a way it's almost a joke now because, you know, gosh, I'm on social media all the time for various things. Yeah. Um, but we needed to do that and we needed we knew that that would be the way that we would connect with people. Yeah. I think the other thing that we've done is, and you mentioned it earlier, we're just authentic. Yeah. And you know, we're 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 two ex teachers, two you know two two ex ex educationalists who we joke and say we run around and play with sticks and fire. There's a lot more to it than that. I can assure you. Um, yes. But we do keep it real. Yeah. And I think people have unintentionally from our perspective but people have bought into that yeah they see us for who we are the type of people that we are yeah and we are just genuine and honest yeah and we do the best we can and we work really hard and i think i think the pandemic actually was was good for that because yeah. people were walking around you know on on zoom wearing their pajamas and without a face full of makeup and the yeah. hair done and yeah. you know all the rest of it and i think in a way that's not been a bad thing yeah but we've always been what you see is what you get with us yeah. and we will deliver the best that we possibly can and that's how it is yeah. and if people have bought into that that's great yeah and it, it reminds me of an, another piece that uh seth godin talks about where he he talks about eskida ekmek the the kind of turkish phrase of putting your bread on the hook mm. and, and what used to happen in the the bakers there was you buy a loaf of bread and then you buy another loaf that would go on the hook for someone who needed it and yeah. and it was there for anyone who wanted to take it yeah. and he talks about doing the same with our with our organizations mm. and with our vision for something that we do it and we hang it on the hook we put it out there for anybody who wants yeah. to engage with it and that's what you've you've done with wild yeah. play you said this is this is what we're doing mm -hmm. to help well-being if you're interested come along absolutely and this is us and we're real and we're authentic and you talked about people buying into yeah. you as people because you're real sure. and you're authentic so that that sounds to me is about how you create that following you just do the the vision passionately yeah you're just real and authentic about it and then you see who joins yeah and you talked earlier about connecting in with the right kind of people the people who share For that sure. same passion as you so that helps you to kind of pursue and keep that going um i just wonder as well kind of how you have um kind of continued to avoid distractions for that so about pursuing that vision and, and being determined about mm. it there are things that come along you talked earlier about for you and denise you you must play it forward mm. how, how do you avoid those distractions maybe people say oh and you could do this um i think i think you have to be true to what you believe in mm. and having said that we will always listen to other ideas that people might throw at us yeah. uh, because you always learn something from yeah. it. So it's yeah. not about dismissing things. It's, it's again about working it in reverse yeah. and saying, well, what about this? And what about that? And, you know, and we have sat, sat around, you know, and said, oh, we could do this and this would be really good. And then, you know, the further down the line you get and say, right, okay, what's the, what's the worst that, that could happen? Yeah. And then gradually you come to the right conclusion yeah, yeah. of whether it's a, a good thing to do or steer clear of yeah. it. So I think, I think you just have to, we, we just communicate a lot um, and make sure that we we think very carefully about things because we want that detail. We want to get it right yeah. or as well as we can. Yeah. Um, so it sounds to me it goes back to that thing you said earlier, isn't it? Is about playing it forward. If this yeah, is an is. idea, does it fit the vision and how will yeah. it look if it plays forward? Yeah. And does that, does that fit yeah. where we're going with it? And I guess... So one of my interesting ones, I noticed, uh, for example, when, when you look on your social media, mm. you look on your website, um, really exciting for you to see your children's book, Gord <laughs> Gordon's Favourite Place. Yeah, Gordon's and then you've got place. a Wild Play clothing range. We have. Uh, yeah, kind of how, how does that fit? How, what made you decide, yes, this fits the vision for mm. what we're, we're after? I think in terms of, the, you know, the merchandise side of things, yeah. um, you know, we, we now have a range of, of items that, that we offer. Yeah. And for us, again, well, play it's mugs, well, for play example. mugs, yeah. mugs, backpacks, hats, the yeah. whole thing, water bottles. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but it, for us, it's about quality mm -hmm. and it's about the durability and is it fit for purpose? Yeah. And actually, you know, having, you know, something that isn't going to keep your 
coffee warm yeah. and you know it's not going to clean up properly and all yeah. the rest of it out there yeah. then don't do it yeah um so everything that we provide is about fit for purpose and it's about the quality and yeah. we feel really strongly about that yeah. so louise who works with us um she has her own small business which is called um little rose and co and she makes leggings yeah um one of our mums jade um is uh, an illustrator she's amazingly talented and we decided actually for our muddy hogs our toddlers yeah. when they're scrapping around in, in the woodland wouldn't it be great if they had some some of our some leggings made so our muddy hogs mascot is herbert the hedgehog yeah everybody loves him uh, there's more to come on him later in the year that's Excellent. another work in progress Look forward to that. Uh, so herbert is now on leggings yeah uh, which are suitable for uh, for the boys and the girls they can get turned into shorts later on so you yeah. get you know d double whammy for your money yeah um and you know all that kind of stuff it's part of it's fun yeah it's part of what we do we're going to be wearing the leggings ourselves yeah um and you know it's it's, it's a great it's a great thing to do yeah. and we're really excited about that and then as for the book um well that's something that i'd wanted to do for a really long time yeah uh, always wanted to write a book of some kind um and as I say, Jade is one of our Muddy Hogs mums, discovered that she could draw. Um, I think she underestimated how talented she so really is. So she's the illustrator for the book? She's the illustrator for the book. Yeah. And I think, again, this goes back to some of the things we've spoken about, really, that over the years, Denise and I have seen, we've got so many case studies yeah. of things where we've supported children and young people or we've witnessed or whatever. And it was just time for me, I felt, to put some of that down on paper and yeah. if that can help somebody else that has to be a good thing so it's using that so, story to help with the well-being so that absolutely it fits that, that absolutely vision. and yeah. i think certainly over the last couple of years with things that how they've been there yeah. is there's a real gap in terms of tapping into some of these things yeah. through children's through children's books yeah um so that's kind of um where all that has come from yeah the book is set here um all of the illustrations are literally what you see in the woodland. Excellent. So it's very real yeah. for either people that come or people that know the woodland and even people that don't. Yeah. Actually, you can still relate to it because it's about the well-being benefits of being outdoors. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's quite exciting really. And if it helps to put Jade on the map with her illustrative talents, yeah. Yeah. that has to be a good thing. Yeah, brilliant. And so I love that again, it, it comes back to the, how do we decide what we do does it fit our vision? And, and for example, Gordon's favourite place, children's book, yeah. fits that vision about helping children Absolutely. with well-being, and it's all about the outdoors. Absolutely. So it brings the two together. So yeah. it's brilliant. Love it. So our time in the woods is coming to an end, uh, and so it's now just about exploring what's your kind of top tip really for turning vision into reality. We heard loads of great things about wild play, how that's come from that position mm. of. Uh, some challenging moments for you, but your experience and knowledge uh, in education, mm. uh, an opportune moment of discovering, yes, actually adults need it too. Definitely. So that's how yours started. We've heard about how you've maintained some of that vision by that constant checking, that constant asking, mm -hmm. does, this, does this fit what we're about to do? Mm. Does it fit the vision? Bringing people in that share that passionate vision. So there's loads of great examples for people within this podcast. But what's your top tip? If you were to filter all this down, is there any top tip you would share with people absolutely. about bringing vision to reality? Yeah, absolutely. Top tip, mindset. Mindset. 100%. Um, you've got to have a positive, can-do mindset. Yeah. Um, anything is possible. That's that's my, my message in, in my book, really. Anything yeah. is possible. Um, and, you know, you have to work hard. You have to be determined. You absolutely have to be resilient. You have to be true to yourself. You have to have that knowledge yeah. um, and that purpose and those values and aims and all those sorts of things, but you have to have the right mindset. Yeah. Um, and it's that, that thing that gets you out of bed in the morning and that you do feel really, really passionate about. Yeah, great. Heidi, thank you so much for that top tip. Uh, and so anybody looking to bring their vision to reality, it is going to be about making sure that you've got that mindset Definitely. Uh, and you know there will be challenges but with that mindset you can get through and bring it to reality so sure. thank you thank, thank you. you for joining me and me. well allowing me to come to your woodland and share it with you i hope you i hope you feel better when you when you leave i'm sure when we you will arrive. and that's one of your key things isn't it we feel better than, than when we arrive and so anybody wanting to find out about wild play take a look at the wild play uh, website you just google wild play mm -hmm. uh, and you'll you'll find it 
and just yeah maybe inquire of you if, if as whether it's for adults or children please about do growing that kind of well-being and thank you for sharing your story with us today and how you brought vision into reality it's uh, a pleasure and so thank you listeners uh for joining us today in the leadership lounge we look forward to joining you joining us again next month uh, and thank you for finding out about vision into reality Thank you.